Hello there and welcome to a new episode of Afterthoughts. I just recorded the Bach Prelude and Fugue in F major, well tempered with the clavier, well tempered keyboard. Number one, this one. Okay, and then many things to, to be uh, covered here because it's, it's, it's interesting. And let's just start with the bar structure. The prelude is written in 12-8, the fugue is written in 3-8. And about bar structures, if I remember well, Gillenberger writes extensively about this. And what he writes, if I'm right in my head still, is um, that 12-8 is a fast bar structure in a sense that it replaces actually the C bar, 4-4 structure. Uh, so instead of having four quarter notes, with triplets, you have 12 8 notes, but the tempo, the beat structure, is the same. So you don't consider the 8 notes as 8 individual notes, I mean with their own right heaviness, but uh, you can, you should play them as triplets. That's, I think, what Gegenberger writes, whereas the 3 8 bar, bar is much more heavier. Uh, that's kind of obvious since you have three eight notes per bar with a heavy accent on the first one of each bar. So the heavy accents are more repeating repeatedly than in the 12 8 structure opening and maybe speeding up the tempo a little bit. So for me, I'm not running to my bookshelf every time I doubt something. I'm not just, as I talk to you, thinking that Kevinberger writes about this. I could check it, I could look it up. But I um, at the end it's your own decision and the music of course is fitted into this bar structure. Um, I give you an example um, of how I approach that. So the 12 8 structure of the prelude is like this, in my opinion. much livelier and you hear it also on the articulation something you have to play with because it enhances the effect more than the tempo or the speed of the tempo the articulation is a very powerful tool structure um, you can better indication of that at least in my it's as I see it so let's talk a little bit about the prelude and it's of course the prelude about the trills the long trills are very difficult ones it's not easy but and if before we talk about that I want to uh, touch one other thing it's, it's the it's the um, the motif in the motif, I would have said the polyphony in the not non-polyphonic piece. Uh, what am I saying? I mean, you can play the right hand like this. But inevitably, you hear another motif. I mean, it's photometically a tom, ta da tom, pom. like it and I think in the 18th century they might have liked it as well it's not of my main concern uh, but I, I think that's a very important practice just to keep some notes make some notes a little bit longer than they're written it enhances it 
makes stronger the effect of the motif within this 16 note value motif. If you would uh, transform, transcribe this piece for an orchestra, you would um, have violins playing it. Of, or maybe an other motif, but you, 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 sh you could think on separate, separ separating these two uh, elements. And finding another way for this perpetuum mobile. And then comes the left hand. You can focus on the right hand and just consider the left hand as a kind of a harmonic structure, it's possible. Or you can make it more clear as a kind of solace, having a lot of fun with his or her um, voice and um, allowing that voice to compete with the right hand and makes it much more interesting to me. You have three letters now. Yum pom 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 and tom ta da tom pom ya pa 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 da 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 da. What I like on the clavichord that you can just also the left hand I mean the dynamic variation that I bring in this very simple bass part is immense it's like like a gam gamba player would do um, he has of course of the gamba player has more even more dynamic possibilities but it's for this music, it's it's enough. If you don't have that, you have to suggest that you're doing that, and that's difficult. So, to me, it's very pleasant to have these possibilities and to um, dynamically uh, change all the time. <laughs> pushing it a little bit on the on the recording it's a little bit less and then comes the trills and the tricky part is that what we began we should continue I mean left hand <laughs> with the trills and long trills are difficult because not only to keep them steady or give them a kind of variation but the ending is difficult. It's even difficult if you play on solo. Why? Because you have to decide when you start the ending of the trill. And that's not an easy thing because in order to know what the moment is, on which you should, should start with the ending of the trill and that can be that you have no ending I mean I use in Nachschlag it's, it's not written in the ornament but I just do it because I like it I have to know where I make the turn and how do you do that? that's an interesting question also to me I think that um, for knowing where you start the ending of the drill, you have to, in your mind, be at the next beat. And that's difficult. It's like separating two parts in your brain. One is doing the motor thing. It's a kind of rhythmical feeling. It gets very complicated when you have the left hand. And certainly when you are in the left hand and your goal is just to list let the, let the listener hear yum da da dum pam and preparing the left hand for its own long trill. At the same time, the right hand is performing this long trill, which just have a kind, should have a kind of egality. I mean, a speed, uh, articulation. I mean, it should not be like this. Let's 
but listen to this C. Yum, that's like a trumpet sound. But many things happen, and so in order to, to make this happen to me, uh, as uh, how I do that is uh, that sounds very strange, but I have the feeling that one's right hand in this case is performing the trill, you focus on the left hand and just at the very end when the right hand has to end its trill you focus again on the right hand but before you do that you make sure that your left hand information you need to play that left hand and don't it's not really reading the notes it's just a motoric feeling so the input of your fingers um, that information should be available up front before you start the ending of the trill. I think, I mean, it's to me, as I feel it, impossible to do both things at the same time. And then, since you have to do it at the same time, you divide the information and you pack it in your left hand, just that you have in the last five or six, sixteenth notes that that information it's up front available, you leave the left hand in its motoric own feeling, you hear it also, and then you start focusing on the left, right hand. And of course, vice versa, when it continues, because next uh, part of, uh, last part of the, the bar, um, there you have the trill in the left hand, with 16 notes in the, in the right hand. It's, it's very difficult. Um, I'll show you. machine guns, uh, you can play them a little bit more fun. But at the end, the, the strong beat should... It has to be on the beat. If it's too late, rather having a trill that's ending, it's a little bit messy, I shouldn't say, but less clean. But the first beat and the third beat should be really, really on. And then goes on. And there are just changes. Left hand takes the low. More articulation because you're lower and if you um, imitate a gamba player, you, you should. right hand has the other, what the left hand has in the beginning. Okay, and then come very long trills. I just jumped to the, uh, one of the most difficult trills is of course the, the long. I don't know if you have uh, made a list, if you hear what I, what I did as a kind of trick actually. Uh, you can continue the trill. And more pleasant to play and to listen to just to make it ending in between. Difficult. And then I just start on the main note. I think that's enough. That's too much. And then the tricky part is not to come in the rhythm of the right hand because that's a very long trill. And if you come in the rhythm of the right hand, you have the. It's like you um, keep you kill the harmonies of the right hand because the right hand here has difficulties. This trill is so strong, and it's on a clavichord. There's no way of playing this, this soft. I mean, you have to give power to it. And what saves you, I think, is just again the same thing. You jump, ta da da bam. Very much accent on the on, on the on the lowest note. And also on the end, the ta da on the on the beat, and that gives the feeling, at least that to me. Wow, we are just again in the rhythm. We continue. Okay, that's that's uh, that's how I do it. Uh, the prelude. Um, 
It's, it's a piece that I played for a long time. I have played many years ago. Just studied it and then left it away, uh, put it away. And just uh, this week, I took it again from uh, the bookshelf. And because of the fact that I had made fingerings in 2009, I, then it's it rather easy to play the piece again. So it needs two voice and difficulty stay. I mean, the drills, difficulty stay, of course. That's a performance question. But just reading a note by the fact that I have made fingerings and I've written them down, we've talked about that in the previous uh, episodes, enabled me to just take this piece very uh, direct, uh, very soon, a very uh, soon, very uh, rather easy again, uh, bring it on a certain level. Okay, well, it is getting way too long. Um, but I think that's the most important thing, the drills and the structure, bar structure. We could say something on the field, but uh, we would end up in an afterthoughts vlog that's about one hour long and that's too much. So, okay, that was it for today then. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this rather technical video. And if you have suggestions for things to cover, please do write in the description box or in the notation boxes below and I respond to that. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, as always, thank you for your subscription and share this video with your friends. And then we see each other very soon again. Bye. description.